Being that this is an open construction site, our pond is a muddy mess. That is the first time in my life I've ever heard a tornado siren. There were uh, golf ball sized hail coming down last night, massive rain, and there were tornado alerts everywhere. It was kind of like being in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. Welcome back to Frisco, Texas here for part two of this amazing koi pond build. We've got the bones of this thing looking great. That was the first rock that we started with. From there we took and we bumped this edge out and now our water's really gonna get turning around the outside here. We're leaving some areas here where there's gonna be some sloping out for beach areas. This will be like a little eddy here. We'll actually pull the liner back and we'll carve this on like maybe like a 45 degree angle and then we'll lay the cobble back and it's gonna really stretch out this way, bringing that water further into that cove. Then on this turn, we did kind of the same thing, bumping rocks out, forcing the water to the outside and then making its way back down into the waterfall for the pond. This is the new waterfall that's gonna be coming in to feed this section of stream. And then we've got some stepping stones going through here. That's gonna be how they cross over this stream section. If you guys have watched this before, you've seen us use this gravel. This is a crushed like, three quarter inch clean gravel. We'll use that behind our stonework to set large boulders and to layer things back. It does a couple things. That stuff is super stable. It packs together nice and makes it super strong. It also affords us the ability to set big two ton rocks like this and kind of twist them around, maybe dig some areas out so we can get it to sit the way we want it and it's not gonna damage the liner. We're gonna do some rock work to make this kick up water on top of this rock. A lot of it will come down here into that little cavern and some of it will be fed into this really cool little notch that's in the back of this. We don't know exactly what's gonna happen there yet, but I can see water coming over this, kind of down this craggy surface here, some spilling off the side, I imagine it's gonna be doing some churning, like a little eddy right there, but I'm excited to see how that looks when it's all up and running. Now we've gotta finish this off to make it complete the natural look. That's gonna involve edges, some beach areas, getting our lighting in, and then graveling in all those horizontal surfaces. We're also gonna be heading up the hill. We've got another 80 plus feet of stream to build, two fountainscapes, we've got a crossover entrance going into the front of the house, Lots of cool stuff happening today. This morning I'm gonna grab Brian and Alan and we're gonna get this next section of stream laid out. We've already done the excavation. Now we've gotta pull all that tarp back that we had on there for the rain. We're gonna get in our rock pad and then we're gonna put our next section of liner in. We've got an overlap that's gonna happen here. I'll show you that, so let's get busy. ahead and got our liner laid into the stream section. Right now you're looking at the overlap. So our liner that's fed from this bottom pool comes beneath these rocks and up onto that shelf and it goes back a good six or eight feet. So that's up underneath this. Then we're laying this over the top and putting our liner down in behind these rocks. Essentially acting like a shingle. So imagine the bottom liner's here, the other one's laying on top. So any water that makes it its way through the system, if it goes behind the rocks, it stays in the liner. So we'll just shed down here and then continue on down the stream. Alan and Brian are pulling in some fabric now. We're gonna lay that all the way into this excavation here. We've got probably about a two and a half foot gap behind these rocks. Once that fabric goes in, we're gonna load this up with gravel. That's gonna level that all up. Then we're gonna do what's called a bib liner, which is foam the whole area, put a piece of fabric over it to watertight it. This way, the water, instead of going back behind the rocks, will actually come up and over and go down the waterfall.
absolutely love this style of waterfall. I'm not a huge fan of just taking like two big rocks and creating a weir and just having water drop off. I like to see it twisting and turning and bouncing off things. Lots of white water and tons of interest. We're pinching this down and we want to get the water coming this direction so that it gets a chance to run up on this rock. That's what that rock right there is going to do. That's kind of a blocker. It's going to give us our direction. It's going to move that water. So the weight of the water, you know, every bit of like 14,000 gallons an hour is pretty heavy. And if you give it a, a chance to get up on something by placing a rock like this, it's going to push up on this rock and cascade this way. The fact that this one is pitched in like this is going to also redirect some of that water back to this rock where we've got that cool little natural pooling area. Brian's done a bunch of finish work here, making it so that this is blocked off and it's gonna force the water to come this way as well as over here. But when it's done, it's gonna have so much interest and it's gonna look totally natural. And then up behind it, we're continuing with that twisty, turny stream. So bringing those rocks out into the stream bed gives us a chance to really kick the water around. So it'll be kicking around this rock this whole area here will get sloped up and just beached out with cobble. Kind of like a wash you would see in nature that pushes all that gravel off to the side, ramps it up into the landscape, and then turns direction and makes its way down. We got this really cool big slab of rock. That thing's about 10 feet long. I could see the kids climbing out on that, standing here, taking it all in. I would be hopping across the other boulders. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> You know, it's funny, when we're building streams and waterfalls, we're always thinking in reverse because they're going from the bottom on up to the top. So you always have to imagine like how the water's gonna flow down and fall off of or flow through the things that you're creating. So when you're placing rocks in the stream, especially a big stream like this, you always think about how the water comes through and what's gonna make it move. We've got this really long stone here, which is about 10 feet long. I love this thing. The water's gonna hit here and it's gonna be forced out into the stream. So you'll see that current come out here and it'll make its way into this eddy and that's where the wall is for the fireplace. And I could just see the way it's gonna come in, kind of probably swirl around in here and then do some direction change and then work its way back down into the waterfall. And doing stuff like this where there's a lot of change of direction, you do that by placing bowlers out into the way of the water, forcing it to go around. What we'll do in situations like this is behind this rock, like just at the bottom where it meets the fabric there, we'll run a bead of foam down there. Because if you don't, a lot of water will go underneath or around the rock, but just a little bit of foam around the bottom edges, even up the side a little bit where you can't see it, is gonna force it to hit that rock and then go out around and continue the same thing all the way down. So we'll do a lot of foaming just in the areas where the water's gonna be making a turn, kind of like this here coming off another long stone. I love the way this turned out. We've got this big long one here and we're kind of going the other direction with that one. Now that we've gotten done with most of the major part of the long stream, right in front of us, we're gonna have a trio of Aquascape stack slate urns. So first thing this morning, we've gotta get onto seaming liners. We've got this large section of stream that comes up and meets this big pooling area where those urns are gonna be. We're gonna take and run another liner from where the urns are all the way through over to where it meets the waterfall for that fountainscape. In order to do that, we're gonna seam a section of liner onto this one. It's gonna be like a T-seam. This one comes in this way, we're gonna seam this way. Then we're gonna unbox those urns, get them over here and mock them up and see what it looks like. And here we go. We're gonna be starting our custom urn fountainscape and this is gonna be one of the focal points. 
huge piece of driftwood. This came out of the Outer Banks in North Carolina. This piece of wood to get to Texas was $2,000, just over $2,000. We're gonna use that, probably tucking one of the urns in or around it. We've got some boulders that are just gonna look fantastic. And here is our blank canvas. We set this big rock with that cutout back there. It just looks so awesome standing up vertical and that urn tucks in right next to it. We actually might take and chisel out some of this stone right in here just so it pulls it in that extra inch and a half and it nestles right in that spot. Then once we get done, we can foam all this. The water that falls off the top of this urn can hit this crevice and it can kind of shoot out the side, creating another little waterfall. Now we're just looking at spatially aligning the rest of the urns. We're gonna actually cut off this piece of the leg and that piece, then we can actually pull and nestle that right up against that urn. That's gonna look spectacular. And then just finish it out with some larger boulders surrounding. It's gonna look like an awesome fountainscape right here as you pull in the driveway. <laughs> it is the morning of day four yesterday we pushed a little harder and got all of this set up this is going to be that fountain area we've got a large stacked slate a medium and a small stack slate and so you can see these two are already plumbed and finished we actually have a two inch pipe so we've drilled this out with a hole saw Right, we came back in, drilled this out, then I've got this in here. I put a little bit of foam around the, the hole and the pipe just to make sure no water is leaking back in there. You can also see I drilled out a light in here, so I took a different, a three inch hole saw, drilled this out. This light will hit this water as it bubbles up. It'll also then hit the canopy of the tree and stuff over in there. So we've done that with the medium, the large, and I'm just about to do the small one. Once we get this done, we can come in, drop a few more boulders, and then we're moving to the bridge. All right, so basically what happened is there was a piece of concrete in here that, got, that we ripped out. This is the existing pad, so we basically gotta go from this elevation out to the driveway elevation, but there's gonna be a bridge here. So what we're gonna have to do is peel the liner back. We're gonna have to over excavate a little bit so we can get some gravel and get some blocks in there so that bridge can sit in there nice and perfect. So the homeowner, Matt, is actually making the bridge out of these eight by eight timbers that were behind the barn. It's gonna be cool to repurpose some of the material that he had here that was part of the house originally, but I'm gonna like to see the mix of stone and wood incorporated in that area where you transfer into the house. And then on the outsides, we'll flank it with some boulders so they don't see any of the block work that actually holds the structure of the bridge up. But today, we can get the rest of this plumbing done for the urns and then get up past the bridge We've got one more scene to do before we reach the final fountainscape area, which is gonna be a set of three stack slate spheres on the left side of the entrance with some more ancillary boulder work. Let's kick some butt on day four. You guys are gonna just love the way this waterfall's turning out that's gonna be at the headwaters of the stream. First off, our block supports are in for the bridge. Brian got those all nice and leveled up. They're ready to have the bridge just dropped right on top of it now once it's built. Over here, this is the very first waterfall that starts this stream. Up behind this, we're gonna have a trio of stack slate spheres probably like large, medium, small, just kind of spread out. So when you pull in the driveway, that's really the first thing you'll see. It'll be elevated in the spot, lit up really nicely. And that's gonna be a pooling area up there that feeds this first waterfall. Just look at this rock. 
and then we got this other one next to it looking like it's just one large rock formation we're at the point now where we're going to frame this side out and then start going back to make our pooling area for our trio of spheres this is where we're going to end it today next video we're going to get really into a lot of the finish work so the edging all the graveling the lighting all that kind of stuff that brings the project together we've got plumbing involved as well if you like this kind of stuff share it with your friends we'd love to have them here we'll see you on the next one Thank you.